Hey, what is going on guys? It's Delvidge and today I'm going to be bringing you a Photoshop tutorial for learning the basics of the program. Now there is a lot to learn about Photoshop. There are a million different features so I won't be able to go over everything today. But if you are new to the program, I'm going to be going over the basic stuff to help you uh, get into the program, know the basics of what you're doing and hopefully design some really nice things. So when you open up the newest version of Photoshop, something like this should come up uh, we're gonna go to new over here on the left side and you can just copy some of the settings that I have you can go from web to mobile to film and video art and illustration print uh, dimensions photo anything you want if we go over to the right side when we try and open up a new document we can see that we can manually change the width to whatever we want but I'm gonna leave it at 1280 uh, we can change it from pixels to inches to centimeters or to whatever you'd like. Any type of unit conversion should be there for you. Resolution and everything like that should be fairly simple. Uh, we can change the background from white to black or to your background color to whatever that is selected. Mine is white, but I'm going to leave it like that. We can also change it to transparent, which is what I will be doing. And we can name it as well, so I'm just going to name this tutorial for the purposes of this video. So after we get that done, we can click create and we will be granted a new page in Photoshop. Before we begin this video, I'm gonna put on screen some quick commands or keyboard shortcuts that you can use while you're designing in Photoshop. These are ones that I use and they're also very helpful so you don't have to go to the very top of your screen and select an option whenever you need to do something within the program. So that's very useful, make sure you take a look at that. Now let's get straight into the video. So at the very top left, these are the main options. So we can explore this a little bit. We'll go to file, uh, you can create a new document, you can open something else in Photoshop. There's some more open options over here. Closing options for closing a document, saving it for when you're finished, exporting, generate, and all these other things. You can share it on uh, Behance, which is a portfolio website, if I believe. You can print it as well here at the bottom, and you can also exit. We go over to edit. Uh, these are some transform options and some selection options that you can use in Photoshop. A lot of these will only become available once you have something selected, but for example, you can transform stuff. The image panel at the top adjusts the current image that you're in. So you can change the mode to something else. If you're working in print, you're gonna wanna go to CMYK, but if you're on web design, RGB is going to be where you want. Um, you can make some adjustments such as brightness, contrast, hue, and all that stuff. This is where you do it. You can change the image size as well as a few other features. Going over to the layer options, this is the layer options, guys. So this is where you want to manipulate the layer to your liking. Um, you can add layer masks, vector masks, all of that good stuff. It's where you duplicate layers. It's where you rasterize layers. But a lot of the options here at the top are going to be found elsewhere in Photoshop with shortcut keys and stuff like that. So I don't really use this panel all that much. The type and select are a bit more advanced. So I'm not going to be going over those in this video. But if you want to see a follow up video where I go more in depth with this, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Filter adds a few different cool effects to your image. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go file open and I'm gonna open something in my background uh, so it's not transparent so for example I find this background that I downloaded off the internet and once I open that I can go to the move tool and drag it to my tutorial layer there we go so it showed up I'm gonna press Control and T to transform holding shift and alt uh, this is a very good thing to know guys holding shift and alt will allow you to drag your image in the direction that you want it to go while still maintaining the same aspect ratio which is 16 by 9 for this picture right here so we have our background I'm um, gonna click the check mark at the very top and if you want to learn how to center an image press control and a on your keyboard or alternatively go to the rectangular marquee tool and select the entire image go to the move tool and you can select these panels here at the very top of your screen to center an image. So for example, if I move this to the side a little bit like this using the move tool, I can select the whole image pressing control A, going to my move tool and selecting these two images and it will create the centered version. Now obviously I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the history panel here on the right side of my screen. I'm gonna click it and you can scroll back to different things that you've told Photoshop to do. For example, I will go to select canvas, 
or you can go back even further to your transforming that we just did and to my aligned vertical centers and with that it is completely erased whatever actions we just did so you're going to press ctrl and d to deselect whatever i just selected and now we're going to go over some of the tools on your page or on your program so the first tool up here in the top left is the move tool and this is what you use to move your document or layer that you've selected the tool underneath that is the rectangular marquee tool and if we right click on any of these things or any of these tools on the left side a bunch of other tools should open up to us underneath the same category of tool that we were currently working with so for example if we wanted an ecliptical um, or elliptical, my bad, marque tool, or a row marque tool, we could choose that from over here. Underneath the marque tool, we have the lasso tool, to which we can change to the regular lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, or the magnetic lasso tool. Underneath that, we have the magic wand tool, and I'll actually add an example of how to use this right now because it's quite useful. So again, I'm going to go to file, open, and I believe I have a star here that I downloaded, which is an image. I'm going to go back to the move tool. And I'm going to drag it into our tutorial document window. After we do that, I'm going to go to the rectangular marquee tool, select the whole image. Instead of pressing control and A, I'm going to use this version of doing it this time. I'm going to use these two panels at the very top to center it pressing control D to deselect and there we go. So I'm gonna go back to the magic wand tool and this tool will essentially select a color in the background of whatever layer you're working with and delete that. So it's very useful for deleting backgrounds of images that we don't want. For example, if we only wanted the star in our image, all we have to do is select the magic wand tool and select the white and then press delete. And you can change the tolerance here up top if it's not working for you minus or less underneath that we have the crop tool so we can crop the image however we want uh, if we wanted to make it shorter we could do that like so and it would be done like that i'm going to press Control and z to undo whatever we just did or alternatively we could go to the art panel the art history panel up here and select whatever we just did Underneath that we have the eyedropper tool and this is a tool that I like to use a lot for designing. What it essentially does is you can click anywhere on your image or on your layer and it will select the color that you just pointed on which is really nice for creating text with the same color as an image or vice versa so the eyedropper tool is really nice. Underneath that we have some more advanced tools with the spot healing brush and the patch tool. I'm not going to go over those today, uh, again this is just a beginner's guide. Underneath that we have the brush tool, which is really nice. You can change the size using the bracket keys on your computer, or alternatively you can go and click the brush up top here on the top left and change the size manually. Hardness basically makes it so. Okay, so the best way to explain this is just by showing you. Having a low hardness will make it a bit softer. As you can see, that is a low hardness brush. Now, if we go back to our brush options and turn up the hardness to 100%, we can see that it creates more of a solid line here. And again, because we use the eyedropper tool, it is the exact same color as our star. So I'm going to go back, going back to our history panel and getting rid of those two actions we just made. Underneath that is the clone tool and again this is a bit more advanced. Same thing with the art history brush, a little bit more advanced. Underneath that we have the eraser tool and this is pretty self-explanatory. It erases anything that we choose so it works exactly the same as a brush as well. We can change the hardness if we want from 0 to 100. Same thing. Underneath that is the gradient tool and this is really useful for creating backgrounds in your designs. You can go up top and change the gradient by clicking these arrows right here at the bottom and changing the color in your gradient. So for whatever reason if we wanted a blue and red one we could change that like this. Holding shift I'm going to drag up and it'll create the gradient that we just chose but I don't think that looks very good so I'm going to get rid of that. Underneath the gradient tool we have some more advanced effects. They are pretty self-explanatory though, like the smudge tool and the blur and sharpen and all those tools. But like I said, beginner's guide. Underneath that is the pen tool. And this is again more advanced, but I will go over it because I mean, it's pretty useful for deleting certain things that you want. So all you have to do is select the pen tool and say we only wanted to get rid of the very top of our star. All we have to do is go with the pen tool, select a point, and then select another point on the other side of what we want to be deleted. 
and then we can just surround this uh, part up here right click make selection click OK or actually I will change the feather radius to one click OK and then you can press delete on your keyboard and it will delete whatever selection you created using the pen tool if you want to create a curve with your pen tool all you have to do is select holding your mouse click button down mouse click button down I don't know what I just said mouse click button guys I'm sorry uh, but click your mouse button down hold it and drag in whatever direction and it will create a curve you can let go and you can do that like that if you want a curve in the selection you're trying to create but again pen tool pretty advanced if you can get that down you're gonna be a lot better of a designer instead of using the lasso tool for very confined and sharp things you're trying to get rid of an image Underneath that we have the text tool and this is again very useful. Um, I'm just going to change the color to white by clicking this box up here. I have Nexa bold as the font selected. If you want to change the font all you have to do is go up top here. But yeah that's pretty self explanatory. I'm just going to type text for the purpose of this video. Pressing control and T. I am going to resize it holding shift and alt dragging from the corners to make sure it maintains its aspect ratio click the check mark after we have the text I'm going to drag it into the center pressing control a I'm going to go up to these little tools up top like I mentioned before the aligning tools and click the two middle ones to align it with our image I'm going to drag the star down a little bit and then the text up a little bit like so and there we go so if we want to edit the text all we have to do is go back to the text tool and select it like so if we want to add effects to our text we can go to the character options over here and we can add italicized effects we can make every text a uh, capital letter we can bolden it we can add an underline and a bunch of other effects you guys can play with that now the next thing I want to show you guys is the blending options. So if we double click on any layer that we want, I'm actually going to rasterize that real quick. Um, double click on any layer that we want in Photoshop, it will bring up the layer styles. So these are a bunch of different options to change the way your layer looks. And it doesn't just work for text, it works on whatever layer you want. So we can go to bevel and emboss, we can change that, we can make it beveled, which looks pretty cool. Uh, we can add a stroke to our text and change the color to like a black or something we can add shadows glows color overlays and my favorite gradient overlays which is what I like to add to a lot of text to make it look really cool we can add that click OK and drop shadows all of that good stuff will be in the layer styles panel a few other things that I'd like to go over are the opacity so opacity basically means how transparent an image is to its background or a layer is to its background I should say so if we change the opacity down to 50% we'll see the text slowly start to disappear I'm gonna leave it at 100% right now if for whatever reason you don't have a window over here that you really want such as the history panel or the character panel all you have to do is go up to window and click it and it will show up in the windows panel and you will be able to drag it back into your photoshop going over the final tools on the left side we have the eclipse tool and a bunch of other shape tools that you can use to create custom shapes in your designs uh, we have the hand tool which we can use to just drag around so say I zoom in here we can use the hand tool to non-destructively look around our image which is really nice and we have the magnifying tool which we can use to zoom in but alternatively if you have a mouse a better way to do that is just hold alt and use your scroll wheel in and out like I'm doing right now and you can zoom that way so the final thing we need to go over is how to save your image properly so go over to file save as or alternatively what I like to do is go to export and then go to save for web and over here we will be given a bunch of different options now depending on what your image is if it has any type of transparency that's important to the image you want to make sure you save it as a PNG 24 instead of a JPEG um, but for like YouTube thumbnails and stuff JPEG is completely fine you want to make sure the quality is at maximum and your metadata is at none after that we can see the image size and a bunch of other options here at the bottom just click save and you will be good to go so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did make sure to smash that like button and one thing I will add is the reason I didn't have a face cam in this video is because you guys were telling me that it was out of sync in the comment section of my other videos 
and it's not out of sync. What's actually happening is my face cam is recording in 30 frames per second, while the rest of my video is being recorded at 60 frames per second, so it's making it seem like it's out of sync when it's really not. The good news is though, I have ordered a new webcam off of Logitech, and that should be here within a week or so, and we will be able to do face cam for the rest of those videos, but until then, I'm not gonna have face cam in my videos just because it looks like it's out of sync when it's really not. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that like button once again. Tell me some more tutorials that you'd like to see in the comment section below. Good luck designing, good luck with Photoshop. Uh, it takes a lot of time to learn everything and I've been designing for over two and a half years. So if you're not very good at the start, don't worry, I wasn't either. Hopefully this video showed you a few tips and a few uh, cool little tricks to use in Photoshop. Until next time guys, my name's Delvage and I'm out. Peace.